In this video, I would like to talk about filters. So filters are one of the most interesting and definitely a very useful topic in, in AC circuit analysis. Um, and the idea is, the idea underlying filters is that a circuit treats different frequencies differently. And we already knew that, but we're going to have some more details about that today. As a kind of change of perspective, um, we're, we're going to start to think about circuits less as this you know, current that happens because of this voltage and we're interested in how much current is flowing. Rather than that, we're going to think about circuits as having a signal in and a signal out. So if we make some kind of block diagram, whatever our circuit is here, it is getting some signal into it and it is getting some signal out of it. Now these signals could be different things, but uh, for our purposes, we're gonna assume these are voltage signals. You certainly can have circuits that have current signals, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna deal with this. So ignoring how much current the circuit needs to do this, we're giving it some oscillating voltage. Maybe it's oscillating at a single frequency, maybe it's some complicated oscillating waveform. Um, and that signal's going into the circuit and we're getting something out that is not necessarily the same as what we, as what we put in. Okay, uh, let's do one silly kind of trivial example. Um, so if we have a signal in that we are applying to a circuit that looks like this, and this is our signal out, uh, we could kind of like imagine drawing a little black box around this thing, right? So we're putting some voltage into this wire and we're measuring some voltage on this wire. We know exactly what to expect for this, right? Uh, this is a voltage divider, so our output is just going to be some fraction of the input that is determined by what those resistor values are. And that's gonna be true no matter what the input looks like because, because Ohm's law is instantaneously true, Kirchhoff's laws are instantaneously true, so this, you know, the output is always going to be whatever fraction of the input is, no matter what frequency we're talking about. Um, before we get further, I also want to remind you of gain. So gain is a way of measuring what a circuit does to an input voltage. Uh, in particular, the gain is the ratio of the output voltage to the input voltage. And since we're kind of used to these maybe being complex values, we will just put absolute value sign on them. So the gain is a real number that is the ratio of the magnitude of the voltage out to the magnitude of the voltage in. All right, so you know, for this, we could figure out the gain with this little voltage divider equation, but we're gonna not bother with this and move to a more um, complicated circuit. Well, I'm erasing. Remember, we can express this gain as a ratio, or we can express that in dBs, decibels. So uh, the gain in decibels is 20 times the log of this ratio, 20 times the log of the, the gain fraction. Okay, so let's examine a circuit that we that we've seen before. So let's say our signal is going in to a circuit that looks like this. So I'm gonna draw a little box around it. I'm probably not gonna do that in the future, but. <laughs> so we have some voltage we're putting into it and we have some voltage we're getting out of it. Now, we know how to analyze this circuit for any frequency, right? Um, if, 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 if we, <laughs> If we're looking at a single frequency, you know, we have some frequency in and, um, and that's going to determine the reactance and impedance of our capacitor, right? So the voltage here at V out, uh, we can use the voltage divider equation to find out how big this is. So remember the output here is just measuring across the capacitor and the total impedance is these two together. So V out is going to be V in times this impedance fraction and that is, you know, ZC over uh, Z total. And I guess I should put absolute values on those two so we don't have any funny complex number stuff. Okay, uh, we know what both of these are. We can plug in for those. Um, so, so I'm gonna write this over here. So V out is equal to V in. Uh, our capacitor impedance is one over omega C. We're gonna write this in terms of omega. Of course, you can substitute in two pi f's for all of the omegas and nothing changes. 
Zc over Z total. So that is our resistor and our capacitor. And these impedances are at right angles. Remember, so our capacitor impedance is like this, our resistor impedance is like this. So the total impedance is at some angle, and we can figure out the magnitude of this with the Pythagorean theorem. So the magnitude of Z total is simply the square root of the resistor impedance, that is R squared, plus the capacitor impedance, which is one over omega C squared. So this is an equation for our output in terms of our input. So this here is the gain of our filter, excuse me, the gain of our circuit. I'm getting one step ahead. So depending on what frequency we have, this is going to be some different, some different ratio, right? Uh, just to simplify, I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by omega C and I'm going to get this. So we're going to get one over, um, so the R is going to be multiplied by omega C. I'm going to write omega RC. So this is squared plus one over omega C times omega C is equal to one. So that's a little, a little nicer, nicer way of looking at that. So like I said, this is giving us the, the gain. Uh, we also could talk about the phase because, you know, these all are complex numbers and the, you know, complex phase of the signal going in is not necessarily the same as the complex phase going out. You can totally analyze the phase of this circuit and that is important, but we're going to not worry about the t that today. We're just going to work about, uh, worry about the gain because um, that's where the most interesting things happen. Okay, so this is our output voltage. So let's look at some limiting cases in terms of values of omega. So if omega is equal to zero, plugging in omega equals zero here, we have one over the square root of zero plus one. Uh, <laughs> so that is one. So omega equals zero means that our gain is one, or in other words, V in is equal to V out. All right. Uh, for higher values of omega than zero, if they're small enough, if it's a low enough frequency, uh, omega RC is going to be small compared to one, and so it's going to be really close to one over one. Um, so for, for low values of omega, I should say sufficiently low values of omega, the gain is one or very, very close to one. If omega is uh, big, uh, and in this case we'll define big in a second, but Maybe I should say big enough, and we'll define enough later. Okay. <laughs> if omega is big enough, um, then this omega RC squared term is going to dominate in the denominator, right? right? So we're going to end up with omega RC squared, which is really big, plus something really small that doesn't matter. So this is approximately equal to 1 over omega RC. So in that case, V out is equal, uh, you know, approximately equal to uh, V in times 1 over omega rc. So if omega is big and this omega rc term is much much bigger than one, um, then v out is going to be only a tiny fraction of, of v in. So, so in other words, the gain um, is, you know, the gain approaches zero or the gain is at least small. It goes to zero if, if omega is, you know, bigger and bigger. Um, which means, you know, at high frequency inputs, we, we do not get an output or we get a very, very small output. So the, the shift between these two behaviors, when, when, when is omega big enough? So that's this, you know, comparing omega RC to one. So if omega RC is much, much bigger than one, this wins. If omega RC is much, much smaller than one, this wins. Uh, so this turning point happens when omega RC equals one. So it turns out this is at a frequency of omega equals one over RC. And if you plug in some numbers here, you will see, this is not, not coincidentally, um, that this is also when, uh, when the capacitive reactance is equal to the resistance. In other words, our impedance diagram looks like this. We have our resistance and our reactance, and we are 
um, you know, at a 45 degree angle because these two things are the, the same size. Um, so when that happens at this, at this point where the behavior changes, uh, and we, if we plug that into the gain equation that I just erased, we get V out is equal to what well, we can do in our heads. In the denominator, it was one over omega RC plus one under the square root. Sorry, omega RC squared plus one under the square root. So that is going to give us one over the square root of two because omega equals one over RC. So that is what we end up with, one over the square root of two. Uh, so this point, uh, when omega equals one over RC, this is called the three, uh, the three dB point, the three decibel point, for the following reason, and this is a basically a mathematical coincidence, if there is such a thing. Um, so, so when we have our output smaller by this fraction of one over root two, our gain in decibels is equal to twenty times the log of one over the square root of two. And if you plug this into a calculator, you will see this is equal to minus 3.01 decibels. So a factor of the square root of two is very close to three decibels. And so this point where the behavior changes between these two, these two behaviors, um, that's called the three dB point. So that's an important characterization of, of this circuit. Um, note also that this, this transition frequency at 1 over RC, um, remember that for an RC circuit, when we learned about RC circuits in, in a previous class where we were learning about, you know, charging the capacitor and discharging the capacitor with a DC, you know, turning on and off a DC signal, we learned that um, RC is the time constant uh, tau. So that's some number of seconds that determines the, the time scale that this circuit changes its, its voltage over. So omega is also equal to one over tau as well. Okay, so that's our, our kind of full characterization of the, the numbers of this circuit. Let's think some more about the Philosophy? No, the, the big picture of, of this circuit. So, so if we were to sum up the behavior, we can say low frequencies at the input, um, they get to the output unaffected. Right, the gain was one or at least really close to 1.95 or something, you know. Uh, high frequencies are, um, are attenuated and in some cases, even so greatly attenuated that there's basically no signal left. So attenuated or zero, out. Uh, so in other words, if I was to sum up the behavior of this, of this circuit with a, you know, with a sentence, I would say that the high frequencies get, get blocked and the, excuse me, the high frequencies get blocked and the low frequencies pass through this circuit unaffected. Uh, so that is why this is called a low pass filter. So this, this circuit is a low pass filter. And that is because low frequencies are able to pass through it, but at the same time it filters out these higher frequencies. The higher frequencies are unable to to get to the output of the circuit. Okay, uh, lastly here, let's draw, let's draw just a kind of cartoon version of the response of this circuit to, um, to an input. So if we were to draw the gain as a function of frequency, at very low frequencies, the gain was very close to one. At very high frequencies, the gain was very close to zero. And in between, there's this transition. It, uh, the shape I'm drawing here only really works if you're looking at the frequency on a logarithmic scale. And this change point between the two behaviors, this uh, 
3 dB point is when we're at about 70% of our maximum. So somewhere about right there is our 3 dB point. And I wrote F here, but of course that could be an omega scale also, or just different by a factor of, of two pi. Okay, so this is our first example of a filter. Um, and we have lots more, <laughs> we have a few other kinds of filters to learn about and some more, uh, some more things to learn about their, how to, how to talk about their behavior as well.